Good morning, Honors Algebra 2. It is Wednesday, April 8th, and we are going to talk today about, what's the name of our section here? Circular functions. And before we do that, today we're going to need to convert our calculator setting from degrees to radians. So let's go over to the mode, to the mode, just to the right of the second key and hit mode and you'll notice that I'm in degrees here. So I'm going to arrow down and go to radians and hit enter. So make sure you've done that and then you can clear and then you'll be ready to go. I'm just going to double check because it's so important. Yes, I'm in radians. So we're good to go. So everybody go ahead and do that. We're going to need that today. So let's go ahead now and talk about 13.2. Now, today we're going to have our um, circle that goes around here. Let's see, where is my thing? Okay. If I were to create a circle here, I'm going to go just around like this. That's a bad circle. But anyway, this is a lumpy circle. Um, I'm going to talk about a unit circle, a circle here on my XY grid. And we call a unit circle a circle that has a radius of one. I need to be like the weatherman, go this way. A radius of one. So we're just gonna have a special situation today where our R value, our R value is gonna be equal to one. That's what the definition of a unit circle is, okay? So um, we know that the sine of any angle is equal to Y over R, Cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x. Now, in a unit circle, what's super awesome, if r has a value of 1, then my sine is just going to be the y value when we talk about the point on the terminal side of the angle that is the xy point on the terminal side. So now, sine just becomes y over 1 or y. Cosine becomes x over 1 or x, and the tangent of my angle it still stays y over x. It still stays y. I'm sorry, I'm in the zone here. y over x. So that's what the beautiful thing is. They tell you that your r value is 1. If you have a unit circle in your grid here, then your r value has been turned to 1. Now, let's say that p is a point, sorry about that, on the terminal side of angle theta. Now, they're telling me that the point on the terminal side is 2 thirds negative 5 thirds. When x is positive and y is negative, we know that is a fourth quadrant angle. So here's my angle theta. It's going to go all the way around from the positive x-axis around counterclockwise. And here is my point on the terminal side, 2 thirds negative root 5 over 3. Now, it has told me that R is 1, that we're on a unit circle, that we have a unit circle going around. And so my R value is going to be 1. And now, all I have to do here is look at the Y value on the terminal side. So the Y value is negative root 5 over 3. For the sine of theta, it's going to be negative root 5 over 3 over 1. Okay, so the y value of the point is going to be the sine value, because r is 1. The cosine is going to be the x value, because x, I mean, because r is 1, the cosine simply becomes the x value. Now, we've done these before, but we've always had to figure out what r is. But here, r is 1. It's fabulous. Okay. Now, the tangent is, you're going to have to figure that out. Okay, there's no way around that. That's y over x. So I'm going to take my y value and divide it by my x values. This just takes a short comp a computation here. Uh, the negative root 5 over 3 divided by 2 thirds. Okay, so the y divided by the x. And remember from pre algebra and even elementary school, key change flip. I'm going to multiply. Oh, let me turn this light off. Sorry, guys. Boop. Much better, okay. That um, when I flip the second fraction, my threes cancel out and I have negative root five over two. Let's move on over to the cosecant. Well, the cosecant is just gonna be the reciprocal of the sine. And so we're just gonna flip this to negative three over root five and rationalize the denominator. 
So let me go ahead and box these because that way they'll stand out to you. So here, negative root three, uh, five, negative three root five over five is the cosecant. The secant is just the reciprocal of two thirds. That one's easy. And the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of negative root five over two, which is negative two over root five, which when rationalized becomes negative root five over five. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what else is in store for us today. So this is exactly what we've done before with our X's and R's and Y's and R's, except our R value is one today. When you look at the um, directions on the homework. Now, let's go over here and use our radian setting on our calculator. If it just says the sine of 1.44, do you see any degrees? You see no degrees. And therefore it is radians okay no degree sign it is radians so in your calculator you might want to practice this the sign of 1.44 you should get 0.9915 make sure your calculator is working okay now let's try this one let's find x where i know the secant of my angle x is 1.975 and they're going to tell me that x is between 0 and pi over 2 radians and so i know x is in radians now what is pi over 2 radians well, let's think about this pi well 2 pi radians is 360 degrees we know pi radians is 180 degrees what would pi over 2 be it'd be 180 divided by 2 which is 90 degrees. So my angle is between zero and 90 degrees inclusive. So what is it gonna be? Okay, and it's gonna be in radians. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change what is the secant of x defined to be? The secant of x is defined to be one over the cosine of x. So what it's saying here is that one over the cosine of x is equal to this ratio, 1.975. So now, how can I find what the cosine of x is? Well, the cosine of x is going to be the reciprocal of this. So you can, um, if, I, if I make the reciprocal on this side, the cosine x, I'm gonna have to do reciprocal on this side. Now, with your radian setting, I'm gonna find the inverse cosine. That's cosine, well, that's second cosine on your calculator, okay? The inverse cosine of this fraction and to two decimal places, it is 1.04 radians. Notice with radians, you do not have to put RAD or radians. If there is no measurement there after it, it is assumed to be radians. Degrees are necessary, degree sign is necessary, but you do not have to write radians. It is um, just assumed that it is. Now, let's look at the next thing. Let's find the exact values. Okay, ding, 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 exact values. We're talking about special triangles, okay? The exact values of the six trig functions of pi over six. Oh, now we're in radians. So let's go ahead and make this easy on our brain. Let's convert pi over six radians to degrees. And I can do that, you learned that the other day with our unit multiplier, 180 degrees is pi radians, the pi's are gonna cancel out, 180 over six is 30 degrees. So basically, I wanna find the six trig functions of 30 degrees. Well, 30 degrees is a first quadrant angle, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch it, you know, I love to sketch these things. And 30 degrees, I'm gonna put like this. Now what am I gonna do? Across from the 30, I'm gonna put a one, I'm gonna put right here next to the 30, a root three, which is across from the 60, and then my hypotenuse is gonna be two. We're not doing a unit circle right now. This has a radius and R value of two. So we don't, we're, that was on the flip side. We're just gonna go ahead and use our relationship for special triangles to do this one. Now, let's find the sine of pi over six. I'm using pi over six, because that's what they gave me. We gotta start thinking radians, okay. The sine is going to be the y over r value, or it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is one half. The cosine is going to be the x value over the r value, or your adjacent over your hypotenuse, root three over two. And the tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, or your y over your x. You can think of it in either way, and you get one over root three, which rationalizes to root three over three. Now, I'm sorry, I'm in the zone here, but I hope you can see it. I'll pull it a little bit closer, but it's still in the zone. Okay, let's move it. 
like that a little bit. Sorry, guys. Okay. Now, the cosecant of pi over 6 is the reciprocal of 1 half 2. The secant is the reciprocal of root 3 over 2. It's going to be 2 over root 3, rationalized to 2 root 3 over 3. And the cotangent is going to be the reciprocal of 1 over root 3, which is simply root 3. Okay. Now, that's, we've done that before. Now, let's find the exact value of x, okay, the exact, let's go back. <laughs> okay, the exact value of x if the cosine of x is 0.5. And what is x? x is an angle in radians between 0 and pi over 2 radians. Remember, pi over 2 radians, we're talking about 90 degrees half of 180, half of pi radians, would be pi over 2 radians, which is 90 degrees. Okay, 180 divided by 2. Okay, so 0 to 90 degrees. All right. Now, it says the cosine of my angle is 1 half. Okay, now, I'm changing it to a fraction. Now, let's go ahead and think about our special triangle here. Our special triangle. Can you see it? There it is. Okay, hmm, a 1 and a 2. I don't know what that is. That's part of a special triangle, uh, 1 root 3, 2. So let's go ahead and figure out, if this is my angle x right here, okay? And that's really not too big, is it? I, I should make it big. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm sorry, guys. All right, now I'm the lefty. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Wah, wah, wah. Okay, here is angle x in radians. The cosine of this angle is 1 over 2. That means the adjacent side is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2. All righty. Now, I'm just wrestling with this thing. Okay. Now, I can go ahead and put a root 3 over here, too. Huh. Look at that. Now, let's think about this. What angle right here would have an opposite of root 3? And what angle up here would have an opposite here of 1? All right. So remember, 30 degrees is across from the shortest side 1. 60 degrees is across from root 3. So I'm looking for my cosine, my adjacent over my hypotenuse, to be 1 half. It has to be 60 degrees. OK. Now, 60 degrees is between 0 and 90. I'm happy right there. So now we've got to go radians. And so I'm going to convert 60 degrees with my unit multiplier, pi over 180, into radians for my answer. And so obviously the pi is going to be in the answer, and 60 over 180 is 3. So I have pi over 3. So x is equal to pi over 3. I probably... Just to make myself super happy here, I'm going to put x equals pi over 3 because I'm solving for x. Okay, so that is my angle. Pi over 3 radians is 60 degrees, and that is my answer because I'm, it tells me x is in radians. Okay, that's it for today. So let's go ahead and get our homework done, and um, I will see you again tomorrow. I'm looking to see, let me get my schedule right here. Do we have any more quizzes this week? No, we do not. We do not have any more quizzes. We had a test on Tuesday, so we, and we don't have any uh, class on Friday. It's Good Friday, and we're celebrating in a very, very unusual way, but I do hope that you have a really special Easter with your family. We can talk about that on Thursday, but anyway, I hope you have a blessed day, and I really wish I were there to help you with this trigonometry, but please, please join us in the Zoom meetings. This is a little bit more of a difficult chapter, and I've seen a few of you, but I really, really want to help you. Um, if you're doing fabulously, that is great, um, and I think some of you are, but please don't hesitate to join our Zoom meeting and get some help on these uh, trig concepts. I miss you, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Maybe see you at Zoom later today, at, well, this morning at 10 a.m. Bye-bye.